In this video, we're going to find out which one of these substances, um, hydrogen ion, chloride ion, chlorine gas, copper plus two, lead plus two, or permanganate ion, which one of these is capable of oxidizing H2O to O2 gas. So um, first thing is uh, we need our reduction table, standard reduction potential table, and uh, it's oxidizing, right? So oxidizing H2O to O2 gas. So let's take a look at our reduction potential table to see. It's oxidation, so we're actually losing electrons. Um, let's just go ahead and um, balance this out here. Um, this is going to be plus two. Uh, we'll put two H2, um, put a two in front of the water to balance out the oxygens. So two oxygens, two oxygens, and then four H plus and then it's going to be 4 E minus here. Okay. So this is the actual oxidation reaction that's occurring in acid. Okay, we can do it in base, but I'm going to do it in acid. And so which one of these substances can actually necessitate or do this oxidation reaction? Well, obviously, um, if this is going to be an oxidation, then these have to be reductions, right? So H plus has to be reduced, Cl minus has to be reduced, so on and so forth. So the way you solve this problem is by actually going to the standard reduction potential table. So obviously have a copy of this available. I went ahead and highlighted the corresponding reaction here. Now notice this is uh, reduction because all of these are reduction half reactions. Uh, so we really have to flip this if we want the oxidation version. And flipping this means this will not be positive 1.23 volts, but it will be negative 1.23 volts. The question is which one of these uh, can make this positive? Okay, remember, when you add the cathode and anode together, um, it has to be, when you add the two oxidation reduction half reactions together, uh, the E cell has to be positive. What you're only seeing here is the E of the cathode. Okay, uh, we also have to have the E of the anode. And that has to be a positive value. So um, let's just do this one by one here. So here we have H plus aqueous. So where is H plus aqueous here? Um, so this is being, it's an oxidation, so we really have to flip it. H plus aqueous here um, is going to H2 gas. So um, let's just highlight that here. Since this has to be minus 1.23 volts, um, even if you flip this, uh, there's no way you can get a positive value. So H plus cannot do this, okay? H plus cannot do this because this is at minus 1.23 volts, and the H plus reduction half reaction is at zero volts. So H plus cannot do this, and um, we'll just put a big X mark by it. Okay, what's next on our list here? What's next on our list is uh, Cl minus aqueous. So let's look at Cl minus aqueous and see where it falls here. Let's just highlight this in pink. Cl minus, if we can find it. Okay, here is Cl minus. Cl minus here, what you can see here is a perfect illustration of the diagonal rule. So um, Cl2 gas going to Cl minus is plus 1.36 volts, and that is enough to flip this reaction into minus 1.23 volts. So um, I should say Cl2 gas can flip this reaction. So the diagonal rule is anything that's a diagonal will cause this to flip. So Cl2 will cause this to flip. 1.36 minus 1.23 is still a positive value. So Cl2 gas will actually cause this to oxidize. In turn, Cl2 gas will get reduced. Now Cl minus cannot do that. Cl2 gas can. So um, for Cl minus aqueous, we're going to put an X here. But for the next one on our list, which is Cl2 gas, uh, that's a resounding yes. Okay, Cl2 gas can do it. So let's put a um, check mark by Cl2 gas once again. Uh, the rationa rationale behind that is that this is the diagonal rule in play. Cl2 gas um, gets reduced to Cl minus, and in doing so, it can flip everything below it and 
this O2 going to H2O gets flipped to H2O getting oxidized to O2 gas, you still maintain the positive value. It's about maintaining the positive value here. Uh, copper plus 2 aqueous. So where is copper plus 2 aqueous uh, along the scheme of things? So um, basically anything above this, anything above O2, anything above O2 um, can cause this to flip, get, become an oxidation half reaction and maintain a positive E voltage. So anything below this cannot oxidize it. Anything above this can oxidize it. You see Cl2 is above this, it can oxidize, causing the flip and still maintaining the positive voltage value. Copper plus 2 uh, should not be able to do that. Uh, you see here, look at its location. So the oxidation of water to oxygen gas is minus 1.23 volts. No matter how you do it, um, if you flip this, um, well, first of all, if you flip this, they both become oxidation reactions. If you maintain this as a reduction reaction, that's only positive 0.34 volts minus 1.23 volts. Positive 0.34 volts is still minus. So Cl, Cu plus 2 cannot do this. Okay, let's look at lead plus 2. Okay, where is lead plus 2 in our table here? Okay, lead plus 2 is right here and no. Okay, lead plus 2 cannot oxidize or flip this reaction. So for water to get oxidized and lose four electrons to become oxygen gas, uh, that's minus 1.23 volts. And uh, the minus 0.13 volts reduction is not enough to maintain this to be a positive value. So PB plus 2 is a big no in water. And then finally, MnO4 minus. MnO4 minus, this is uh, the permanganate ion. And let's look where that is on our table here. And yes, okay, so look at the orange. We want to flip it. We flip it to get this reaction, the oxidation version. And MnO4 in acid, yes. Okay, again, the diagonal rule, MnO4 uh, at positive 1.51 volts can cause water to get oxidized, flipping this half reaction, making it one point, minus 1.23 volts, plus 1.51 volts, minus 1.23 volts is still positive, and then O4, the, uh, the ion in acid, can oxidize water to oxygen gas and release four electrons. The permanganate ion can do that in the presence of acid H+.